all right so good to be back uh, welcome back to my channel my name is Satson um, today is a continuation of a lot of our crowd for beginners in our last tutorial we looked at how we can create tables in our database and so we were running migrations and we saw that we can create actual tables in our database so for us to be able to interact with those tables that we created in our database we need to have some kind of a model that is going to be interacting with that database table to create a model uh, in php there's a command that we use the artisan command but before we get into that i want you to go into your resources and inside your views and inside your welcome blade.php which is the one that i have open right here remove or delete everything we want to create our own web page i'm going to put an exclamation point which is a way to create boilerplate in visual studio code and if i need to enter you see it generates this code for us so we want to give this a name and this is our crud app crud app and inside the body we're going to create an h2 heading right here register an account just like that so if i save this so inside this terminal if you cannot find it just click on this icon up here and then you can see your terminal right here and so we want to run our application so we can run it by saying php artisan serve and if i hit enter it's going to give me this url right here so i'm going to follow that link and you can see uh, i have register account right here which is exactly what i put here which is this h2 heading here open so your routes right here and then go to your web.php this is where we create our route so i'm going to open that web.php and you can see we are accessing this route class and on that class there's a method called get and of course this is uh, the first parameter which is the route which is just a forward slash and then we have this a uh, closure which is a function which is going to be fired each time we visit this url right here so in our case uh, this url is just uh, localhost 8000 when our users visit this route so this function fires right here so it's going to return some kind of a view and this view here it corresponds to the view that we have here which is welcome.blade.php we do not have to specify the extensions .blade.php you can just write the first this first part which is the name of our view right here and, so, and we have to put that in quotation marks like we have here we could return something else uh, other than a view we could uh, literally return some kind of a text yeah, hello world and if we go back to our route again if i refresh this you see it says hello world of course we do not want this we want to return our view uh what i'm going to do is inside this welcome blade.php we want to be able to create users inside our database we can see we have this users table uh, uh, that we have right here so we want to be able to add users and interact with this table in our database unfortunately for us um if you go inside the app right here and inside the models there is a user model that comes pre-installed with laravel this is the model that we're going to be using and then later on in this tutorial i will show you how you can create your own models for the corresponding table in your database so each and every model that we have corresponds to some table in your database so this user model corresponds to this user's table that we have right here so that's why we need to use this as an example for us to be able to add users we need some kind of way to collect the user information and then post it to the server right. to the database table and so we're going to put a form right here where users will enter their username their password and their email and then we can send that to the server so i'm going to look for a form it's w3 schools there's a form right here i like this one and so that's what i'm going to copy copy that and then paste it inside your welcome blade.php which is the only view that we have so if i paste that so we need only three fields right and so here we are only missing a password so i'm going to say password right here and this is going to be an input so i'll write input and it's going to be of type password and we also need to provide name for this particular field right so its name is going to be password you can name whatever you want but it makes sense just to give it this actual name right here which is the data that you're going to get 
get from that particular field. This name attribute is what PHP uses uh, when we are extracting these on the server. We are getting this from the user and then on the server for us to access that, we use this name attribute to access this particular data. So I'm going to remove these BR tags. Refresh and you can see I have my form right here. So we have our name, our email, and then we have our password. Is when we submit this, we want this to be submitted to the database. We have to go inside our routes, which is our web.php. Uh, by the way, uh, you should remember if you want to access this web.php, you go inside the routes and then web.php. And we want to define a route here, which is going to determine what happens when we submit our form. Because when we hit this submit, this uh, input button here some action should should be taken and so here on the form we're going to make a route called register here uh, remember it's in quotation marks uh, forward slash register this is where we're going to submit our form so inside here we need to be able to create some kind of a route by the way i'm getting this route from this line right here uh yeah so double colon uh, and on that route, we want to be able to use a post because we are posting data to the server. And this takes in two arguments, A comma B. This A path, so this is going to be forward slash register. It's, it's the one that you specified up here on the action. So it's the one that we're going to pass. And the B is going to be a function, an anonymous function. We call this a closure in PHP. So function, and then we have this. And then, of course, I need to put uh, that semicolon here. All right, so for now, uh, I want to return something. If if we submit our form, uh, so. account successfully uh, created right here. So I want to return this text each time I submit uh, the form. So let me save this. Uh, of course, I need to put that uh, semicolon. I always forget that. Okay. We are going to submit our form to this route. And so once we submit this, we want this to fire, this function to fire. And this function will return this statement, account successfully created. Let's try that out. And let me refresh this. And let me put sets and sets in at gmail.com and some kind of a password. And let me submit that. Okay, the, here we are. All right, so you can see it's working up here. This is taking us to forward slash register, which means if we submit that data, it's taking us to this forward slash register. But when we are taken to forward slash register on a post method, we're supposed to return this, but that's not what we're returning. We are actually getting this 4119 page expired. So what is this 4119 page expired? Fine. There is this thing right here. I'll try and explain it the best way that I can, uh, but of course you need to research further. There is what we call cross-site request forgery. So what PHP is doing here is it's actually protecting us. It's not allowing us to post any data unless we have some kind of a token and so we are not presenting that token to php and so it's not allowing us to post that data to our server so csrf is a type of attack that tricks the victim into submitting a malicious request it uses the identity and privileges of the victim to perform an undesired action on their behalf and so if we post this information and then we do not provide some kind of a token to identify ourselves, PHP is refusing us here to post this information because we did not provide some kind of a token. And so it requires us that we provide some kind of a token. And so how do we provide that kind of a token? Inside your form here, when you post this information, you need also to accompany this information with some kind of a token. So the way we do it, we use a blade uh, directive. Uh, which is uh, this thing right here, which is a CSRF directive. In Laravel, your form is like a box. The at CSRF is like the special key. So we need to provide that to the server. So up here, we can say at CSRF. This statement right here on line 12 is what we call a blade directive. And so what happens behind the scenes, this thing here will be converted into some kind of an hidden input with a value of a token that is going to be generated for us by php we can use that to identify ourselves that we are not actually bad actors we are who we are claiming to be and so if i save this now with this thing right here if we are to go back refresh this web page and then hit on submit you can see it says account successfully created it means that we can post our data now without any problem. And so then this is where we want to submit the information from the user and then create an, an entry into our database table. But how do we do that? We need a way to access 
that information that is being sent by the user. So in PHP, we have the request object. I'm, I'm sure you can see online for here. There's an illuminate HTTP request. This request object is where we're going to get the data that the user posts to the server. And so the way we use it, of course, I will recommend that you check the the documentation and so i'm going to say request here that's what we're looking for http request yeah, search for that and let's see how accessing the request so to access the request you have to pass in request of course you have to import it up here and we create a variable called request uh, we could name this whatever we want but we want it to be request because that, that is descriptive and then we can use different methods on that request and so here it says that we should say request and then we create a variable of this request object and so i want to dd this request object a dollar request right by the way the dd is um let me go back to the documentation again and show you so uh, each time uh, please rely on the documentation this dd function it's a help us this the dd function dumps the given variables and ends the execution of the script so that's where i'm getting this dd so we want to dump the information that we're getting from the request object if somebody posts or send a request to our server what is it that is contained in that request object that's what we're trying to see here so we are uh, trying to get this from this request which is up here so uh, let's try and see that let me go back right here so if i submit this you can see what that dumping has done here you can see we have this whole thing right here and it's coming from http request which is our request object that's what we have right and so if you look inside your request which is this attribute request which is the second line right here if you click on the arrow right here you can see there are parameters in that request and if you click on that you will see the information that we sent to the server uh, when you submit this form it's going to be submitted to the server and it will take us to this uh, register and which is uh, which happens to be this and yeah this action would then be uh, executed right here so we are executing this function after we submit our form that's why we are getting all this information you can see here we have underscore token which is this line here and then we have our name which is Edson, our email which is Edson at gmail.com and then our password right there so we want to be able to extract this data and so we know now that our data is inside this request object and so we can then use that and then edit as an entry into our database table so inside here we're not going to be dumping this of course we're going to leverage on this request variable and on this request variable we can validate the data that we are getting from the user validate by the way how do i know this well again documentation look for validation uh your validation is right here writing validation logic right here so you can see we can request that request object which they are getting from here they can validate the data that is coming from the user each entry from the user you can see there's a title there's a body here but we have three entries right uh, from the user uh, when they fill out our form they are uh, importing their name their email and their password this is what we want to extract and so here we can validate it has to be an array um like this and so you can see from here it's an array and then the strings here so we're going to use uh the strings uh, where do we get this information we're getting it from the name attribute that's where we can extract the data that the user inputs on the name and on the email and then this name attribute is important if you do not provide this name attribute then you cannot be able to extract this uh, information and so here we could say name and then it's an, an associative array, right? Which is more like dictionaries in Python. So we provide a key and then a value. The value is we're going to validate this. How do we validate? If we go back to our documentation, we can see we can use a string required, unique and marks and separate them uh, with pipes. Or we can use an array like this one. So I'm going to use arrays uh, in, in, instead of using a string. So I'm going to say this name is going to be required. Have a minimum number of characters. Want this to be a minimum of four characters. Email. Oh, I add. And we also want this to be it of type email you can specify that and we also want this to be unique but this unique you have to specify the table in the database so this is going to be on the user's table the last one is the our password quotation marks password 
is going to be required and a minimum of eight characters. So this is the validation. Of course, we can assign this to a variable. User data right here. By the way, uh, this is how you create your variables in PHP, right? Uh, Laravel is PHP, so PHP, when you create a variable, you use a dollar sign and then the name of the variable, and that's it. Whatever we're going to get back here, we're going to have it in here. We're going to re return user data, which is this array right here that we created here. So let's see what that contains. I'm sure it's going to be some kind of an object. So if I save this and go back and refresh and submit, Boom, you can see right here, we are getting this data back. We're getting the name, the email, and the password, which is exactly what this is. So inside this user data, we have this thing, which has got our name, set to our email and our password. And so we can grab this information and then we can have it in our database. Okay. But before we do that, I'm sure you can see there's some flaw in our design here. Uh, the password is is visible so we need some kind of uh, a way to, to hash our password it's encrypting our password and so i'll go back to the documentation and i'll look for a method called uh, bcrypt bcrypt is one of the helpers method that we have it's, it's available in on a global space in in, in a lot of our applications so you can see bcrypt the bcrypt function hashes the given value using bcrypt um, you may use this function as an alternative to the hash facade i'm not going to be using that hash facade so i'm using this bcrypt right here so we want to convert this password into some kind of a hash to access that password since this is an associative array we can say dollar user data and then the key is password bcrypt this dollar sign user data and our password right here so we're getting the value here and then we encrypt it and then we are assign it to this key right here which is our password and we're going to return that user data let's see if this is working uh, of course we need to provide a semicolon right here so if i submit this and you can see what happens to the password it has been encrypted it has been converted into a hash by bcrypt and so this is what you want you want to save your data inside your database like this so that nobody even if they break into your, your database it's not going to be easy for them to to get access to the actual password for us to be able to add this to our database table we need to be interacting with our model and our model uh, provide us with functions that can interact with our database we can reference that user model which is inside our models this user let me open our user model right here all right so if you open your user model you see it's a class called user and it's, it's inheriting from this and which is inheriting from model and in that model class that's where we have methods or, or functions that we can use to interact with our database and one of those methods that we have in, in that model which is being inherited by this user model is the create method you can use class methods in php uh, it's just like when you have a class and you say dot some method here in php we use this double colon and that's how we access those methods and so we are saying user which is our model uh, there's a method called create we want to create a user we need to pass this object right here which is our user data and so we can say user data since we already validated it and we know that it's clean and it, it follows our rules so now we can save in that user and of course we want to store this in a variable new user right there this is a new user created and what we want to do is we want to return dollar sign new user right here this user here for us to be able to access this we need to import this use and then we go to the user and look at his namespace right here we want to copy this thing here then we reference the name of the class uh, which is this thing right here which is user and so we're going to say user uppercase and that's it so uh with this we can now use this user inside here of course if if you didn't have this you could also use uh, a certain extension let's say you you reference the here you can right click click on import class and we can select it right here so we now have it right here 
uh, this extension if you go to your extensions you can look for an extension called php namespace resolver uh, this particular one by mehadi hassan and yeah you can use that and then it makes your life easier the attributes that are mass assignable you can specify them in your uh, model and do the same for your own models that you create all right uh, so having done this i'm sure we are now able to add uh, users into our database uh, by this logic that we created down here all right so let's try and add a user we yeah. have set zone and we have set zone and gmail and then we have some kind of a password let me change this password to something that I remember. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's hit that submit button. Hit submit and boom. Yeah, so it's working. So I want you to look at this returned values uh, here. This is an entry into our database. And now we can look into our database and see whether this user has been added. And if I am to refresh our database uh, table, refresh, and you can see we have our user right here for id set on is the name and you can see four is the id set on in the name set on a gmail and the password is hashed you can see right here and created add and updated and then so we have successfully added user into our database table uh, this is possible because of this user dot php which we used right here to create that user and so this is where models come in if you look at our um, architecture right here our model is the only way we can interact with our database tables that's the interface uh, without this model we cannot be able to interact with our database we use the model that came with laravel how then do we create our own uh, models so you can go to to your documentation uh, generating model classes by the way a model is just a class php artisan make model in the name of the model the name of the model will take the singular of the table in the database if the table in the database is called products the model is going to be called product with uppercase p so uh, let's try that out so if here i can say php artisan make a uh, colon model and then uh, the name of the model so in this case it's called product that's the one that we're trying to make because in the database we have um, products right here this is the table that we're trying to interact with and using this model that we're going to create here so i want you to look at these models here you see that there will be a product model added here once i run this so if i hit enter you can see up here a product model has been created for us if we open that you can see there's not much into it but this is an interface that we're going to allow us to interact with that table of course this one is extending from model we can allow for mass assignment mass assignment is whereby you take a number of attributes and then you assign them all at once and so this is where you might need that protected available this is in the documentation by the way and then you pass it as an array like this and so what are the fields that we want to mass assign uh, so we can look at our table right the table that we're trying to deal with and go back to our database here you can see we have the name id is auto generated for us so ignore that then this created it and updated it is also generated for us so we need the name description price and quantity so we can say quotation marks name description price quantity right here okay so yeah now we can mass assign this if i save this uh, yeah it's going to allow us to mass assign just like we did here in our uh, user model we had this protected fillable and we can mass assign the name the email and the password uh, this is how you interact with your database tables you can use your models to do that so in our next tutorial uh, we're going to look at this controller we haven't touched on this controller so i hope this has been helpful if you find this video helpful leave a like leave a comment uh, uh, consider subscribing to this channel i hope to see you in my next tutorial for now i'm out cheers